This was the opening ceremony of the Olympics. This was full of all sorts of mockery and debauchery. This was all this was really an affront to Christians and anyone who has any sort of biblical belief. They're going to watch it. They're going to take it in and they're going to see all the little periphery things outside of the competition. They'll see the the bands. They'll see they'll hear the music. They'll see the dancers. They'll see these things. And they're trying to make this commonplace. They are trying to make the things that we are seeing before us make it seem as though it's OK. It's normal to intentionally mock the Last Supper, to give some sort of apocalyptic thing. I don't know what this is running across the water uh, to have the person with the, the head in his hand and so forth. Now, these are things that they are putting out. Also, by the way, these are things that certain platforms are taking off as though that they're inappropriate. However, if they're appropriate to be shown to other people, I guess it's appropriate depending upon who actually presents it. But these are things that we should not be alarmed. These are things that should not cause us to wonder, to worry. As a matter of fact, as outraged as it might make you, it should invigorate you to want to fight. Jesus puts it this way. He says, the world hates you. Uh, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, well, then the world would love its own because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world because of this the world hates you, which makes perfectly good sense. They don't hate us for us. They hate us because of him. Remember, the world that I said to you as a slave is no longer, I'm sorry, the world that I said to you, a slave is no, not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. So his point is, because they did what they did to him, and we know it, they are going to want to do the exact same thing to you. They don't mock Islam. They don't mock Hinduism. They don't mock Buddhism. They don't mock anything else, but they mock the one thing that their God is upset with. They mock the one thing that their God hates. That is God. Notice what Jesus says, though. Let's go down to verse 23. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now they have both seen and hated me and my father as well. That part is interesting. As a matter of fact, it's powerful because of the works that he did, including and especially dying on the cross. They hate him all the more. And look what he says. But they have done this to fulfill that which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. There is no reason for them to hate Christianity. None whatsoever. Now, do we ever at times as believers um, show ourselves to be uh, bad representatives of Christianity? Sure. But the same can be said for everything else and everyone else and every other religion. But because it's about Christ, they are going to hate this. Now, you need to understand this isn't anything new. They've always had these sorts of uh, false deities, these things that want to portray uh, the worst things about human humanity, um, sexual immoralities, things like that. Remember, Paul has to confront uh, them, and he does so in a skillful way as well. He's passing through. Look what he says in Acts 17, 23. While I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, that means all these other idols and statues, I also found an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. Paul takes the opportunity, which we should take the opportunity, not anger, but the opportunity to show and point out what you think you're missing, what you don't know you're missing, what you're mocking and you should not mock to show the power of God and not necessarily in a display of signs and wonders, but just by giving them the word. Why? Because the word is powerful enough to pierce through even these artificial examples of debauchery and mockery. As a matter of fact, uh, this wasn't the first time even going back to the Old Testament, Elijah had to confront them. Now, Elijah did it in a, actually in a wonderful way. Uh, he mocks <laughs> the prophets of Baal. Uh, when they are calling on their God, he says to them, call out with a loud voice for he is a God. Either he is occupied or gone aside or he's on a journey, or perhaps to sleep and needs to be awakened. They have no God. The reason why it's important to recognize they have no God is because they do any and everything to put on a display for him. Their God cannot make a display on his own. So 
they have to do so. They have to promote him. They have to present him. We don't have to. We can just simply be living witnesses of who God is in us. We can look at nature and see what our God has put on, on full display. And so I wouldn't let what you saw in the Olympics be a bother to you. As a matter of fact, let that reinvigorate you. Let that cause some motivation to go out and share the gospel. Let that be a reason for you to be a good defense, a good example, a light in this dark world to the people that they can see how Christians are, how we love. And in spite of your mocking, we won't we won't return evil for evil. What we will do is we'll show love for them. And so uh, when we see these, these are just constant reminders that one, he's on his way back Two, we've got a lot of work to do. And three, we are the people for that task. Amen.